What's up, everybody? Happy Tuesday, and welcome to the Commander's Film Room. I'm here with my co-host, Mark Bullock. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing very well, thanks. And you? Doing very well. I'm a teacher here in the DMV. I'm enjoying my nice little spring break right now and looking <laughs> forward to talking about some football. So I'm looking forward to being here. Um, today, we have a pretty polarizing hot topic in the D.C. area, especially talking about quarterbacks. Uh, we're talking about J.J. McCarthy and how he's kind of risen up the draft boards. And it was interesting. Like I would listen, you know, I love Bucky Books and Daniel Jeremiah, and I was reading about them. And the narrative is they don't necessarily rise up the draft board. Just now that scouts have the time to kind of sit down and kind of go through the film and kind of break it down. So I'm, I'm kind of curious to see what your thoughts on on McCarthy today. What's up, Scott? I see you in the chat as well. He said, <laughs> he said, hi, Jen. It's great to see you, George, and having a UK voice with Mark on the show. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> Mark, before we dive into the tape, um, so obviously pro days are a big topic now. We had J.J. McCarthy's last week, Shane Daniels tomorrow, and we have Drake Mays on Thursday. Um, I'm kind of curious with your thoughts. You know, I respect your opinion. Uh, do you, like, what do you, do you value pro days heavily? And, like, what do you look for when you're watching a pro day? For me personally, I, I don't get a huge amount out of them. I, I know they have a ton of value to the teams, um, mm -hmm. but it's more about, meeting the guy in person and um, seeing him throw live, feel how the ball comes out of his hand live in person rather than just on a screen um, and kind of the meetings, being able to meet the guy, see how he is around his teammates and whether they gravitate towards him and then the kind of leadership aspect of that. Um, so that is important for the teams. That's not really stuff that, we get to see as fans watching from afar. Um, so for me, they don't put, I, I don't put a huge amount of value in that because, you know, in, in what way does a, a throw in shorts <laughs> with no defenders kind of stack up against the countless hours of film a guy has. So um, I don't put a huge amount of stock in it, but I understand that there's more to it than just what we see in like the cut up of, all of a guy's throws on a pro day like that that means nothing to me it's more about the the meeting the guy and, and finding the the person behind the player um and, and that's the stuff that you know the commanders had dinner with jj mccarthy the the night before his pro day that would have been probably more important than the actual pro day in, itself so um that's where um the value is yeah absolutely i feel like i feel the same way um i actually pulled a quote from dan graziano the other day talking about how they the whole Bears contingent went out two days early to meet Caleb Williams. They basically sat down with him. They ordered dinner with him. They invited his teammates to watch it interaction as well. And I think you know, as fans, as you know, as content creators as well, we have to consider that these are such huge investments for these pro teams, and they want these players to have high character, high interactions with their teammates, and they're they're putting their face to the franchise, especially on quarterbacks on on these players as well. So they definitely take that very seriously. So I think the personality aspect is important to pro players, but I agree. I think the game game film and the competitiveness is what you see with the game film. Um, so speaking of film, we're going to be looking at JJ McCarthy today. Um, before we kind of dive into him, like what has been your overall like evolution of your thoughts on JJ McCarthy over time? Like I think he's kind of been more of a quiet prospect because he's more of a handoff kind of running back, you know, quarterback in Michigan, but they were starting to see some like next level traits and projections of where he could be in the NFL. So I'm just kind of curious, what are your overall thoughts on McCarthy and how's it evolved over time? Yeah, I, I, I watched him quite early. I, I kind of did the top four quarterbacks quite early. It, it, well, I'd say early um, in terms of the draft prospect uh, process back in kind of late January. Um, and I kind of watched them all back to back to back. Um, mm -hmm. And I really liked what I saw from McCarthy. And, and there is a, you know, the, the style of offense that they ran was very heavily re reliant on the run. And, and that's just the kind of horrible way of doing things. Um, <laughs> but the, you, I definitely saw the traits that, um, I, I think translate to the NFL, the, the ability to attack the middle of the fields, the, the play action stuff that he does really well. Um, and I saw a guy that when I was watching him, all I could think of was this is a guy that Carl Shanahan would love or any mm -hmm. of those guys that are using the Carl Shanahan system um, would absolutely love. Um, he has so many traits that fit that system. Um, and, and so that's, that's what I was seeing. And, and I couldn't, I never got away from that though. In the entire time I thought that's a guy that, that would fit that system really well. So that's where I kind of sat with it. And, and personally, I'm a guy that really likes that system. That that's kind of the system that I learned football in, I guess. 
um, from studying that when when the Shanahan's were in Washington. Um, and so that is where um, I, I probably like McCarthy more than a lot of other people, certainly in the kind of Washington community. Um, mm -hmm. and, but ob objectively speaking, right now, the other three guys are, are better players than him. Um, okay. That's subjectively speaking. Subjectively speaking, I, I like him quite a lot. And so um, I, I, I might have him a little bit higher than most. Gotcha. Very interesting. So we'll definitely break that down and kind of watch that today. And yeah, I think he's going to be a very intriguing player to kind of monitor over this next couple of months. Um, real quickly, we have Boring B from the chat. She says, great to catch you guys live. Enjoying enjoying the show live from the UK. We got a lot of UK, pre UK presence in the uh, chat. I love that. It's fantastic. So <laughs> I love it. So before we pivot over to the to the game film, let's kind of look over our agenda real quickly. So JJ McCarthy, um, this is kind of an overview of what we're going to be watching today. So thank you, Mark, for kind of putting this together for us. Um, we're going to be talking about attacking the middle of the field, his strengths and weaknesses in regard to that, uh, throwing with anticipation, his ball placement, um, NFL reads and progressions. Um, is he good under pressure? It's going to be something we're going to be talking about today as well. His mobility and my favorite topic, Mark, moments of madness. I'm kind of curious <laughs> where we're going to go with this, but uh, I guess we'll see later on in the show. It's a good little segue to what we're going to be talking about. Is there anything you want to touch on this before we dive right into it? Uh, no, I think that pretty much covers the, the rundown. And I've got kind of a couple of clips for each one of those sections. And, and you'll see as we go through this, they all kind of blend in together. Um, but I've tried to separate them to, to show those different aspects of of what he does well and, and the traits that should translate to the next level. Um, so, um, yeah, I think we can uh, we can just jump into it from there. All right, sounds good. I'll throw you over the computer. Let's give it a shot. Put some music on. Cool. Um, so yeah. we'll start off with attacking in the middle of the field. And this is a, a big topic of deliberation for, for quarterbacks coming into the draft. And, and obviously we, we've seen the talk about, you know, Jaden Daniels being a guy that tends to attack more outside the numbers and vertically, whereas Drake May tends to be a guy that attacks more over the middle of the field. Um, McCarthy is definitely more towards the Drake May. And, and in my opinion, almost not necessarily better than Drake May at it, but he does it pretty much to a similar level to Drake May is, is attacking over the middle of the field. Um, mm -hmm. And they do it off of play action. They do it just normal drop back passes. Um, and you'll see this whole set up, up that I've got throughout this is, is he's going to be attacking the middle of the field. And, and this is a very basic version of it. You've got a tight end here in a, in a bunch set and, and he's just going to run a basic cross over the middle. Um, and you're going to have two Alabama defenders dropping into zone coverage either side of it. And, and you're going to see he's not a lot of quarterbacks would see a very tight window over the middle of the field, especially with this referee kind of getting involved, almost acting as an extra defender. Uh, but McCarthy's not phased and, and he makes the throw. So we'll see this here as, as we'll let it run through. You can get the motion um, across and then out back. And then you see the tight end coming across, a little bit of a play action fake. You get a bit of a bite up, but the linebackers then drop back. And again, you've got this referee weirdly placed right in the middle of the field where he wants to throw this ball. Um, so that kind of is off-putting. But McCarthy just stands there and delivers the th throw and you'll see it from the end zone angle it looks like it's behind its target but when you see the end zone angle um, you'll see that he actually had to place this where he where he did because there was linebackers dropping so um, again you see one linebacker here running to the flat with the running back uh, you got the other linebacker here it's stepped up and he's now dropping back and he's looking for that crosser um, and again you got the ref in the way uh, but McCarthy's happy to stand there deliver the ball over the middle um, and ideally it, you, you'd be able to put this way out in front and let the guy run onto it. But this linebacker is dropping back into the window. So you can't just throw it way out in front. You kind of have to put him on the guy a little bit. <laughs> and so the tight end has to make an adjustment. And again, it's the referee is in the way. It's crazy. Um, so he, he can't really put it right in front of him, but um, decent ball over the middle, not afraid to attack um, a relatively tight window and um, does it consistently. Um, so this is another one. Again, tight end motions in short. Uh, this time against Ohio State, and, and he runs a very similar route over the middle. Um, and again, you can see play action, get guys to bite up, quickly set up, get rid of the ball, hit his guy in stride. And this time there was no guy stopping him from making that throw in stride, so he, he was able to deliver uh, a better ball out in front. Again, quick setup. You can see, the, again, the referee is kind of exactly where he wants the ball to go, but he's <laughs> able to put it just a little bit outside in front of the referee, and, and again, right in stride, yeah, tight end. Throw maybe a little bit high but that's being a little bit picky and it's it's still letting the tight end catch the ball in stride and, and turn up the field and and pick up some yards after the catch 
And then another one, again, similar type of idea, um, this time a little bit deeper. Um, in the uh, championship game against Iowa, um, you got a tight end again uh, lined up kind of in the as the number three in, in the slot, um, and he's going to run this kind of over route, deep over route. Um, and you're going to get safety biting up to the flat uh, to try to match the running back. So that tells McCarthy that he's got all this kind of space to work with. Um, he's not worried about this safety. If, if the safety was back, he would probably have to flatten this throw off. But with the safety biting up, he can th- layer over the top of him and delivers a strike. And again, we'll see the end zone angle. Unfortunately, the tight end drops it. Um, but you'll see it's it's at a really, really nice throw. Hits him right in his hands, right in front of him. Um, somehow he drops it. Um, and, and Mark, that's the th- big thing with McCarthy, right? Like, I feel like when I was watching some film yesterday on him, He's a surprisingly great athlete. I think people kind of underrate that as well. Like I think the um, they were saying he ran a four four forty. I feel like he has a strong enough arm as well. You're starting to throw, you're starting to show these plays where he's throwing ahead of the wide receiver as well. I guess the big thing with McCarthy is just the projection, right? His limited opportunities that we see in the game. But um, we're seeing some good things here. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. It's the there. There definitely was a limited amount of reps when you compare it to the other guys, um, just because of the style of offense that that they they ran, but. Um, you know that that style of offense they ran is directly translatable to the NFL. Um, mm-hmm. it, it's probably more so translatable to the NFL than than some of the other offenses because, well, for one, Harbaugh is back in the NFL and literally going to run the same offense. Um, <laughs> so it is it is translatable in that way. But in terms of the the different concepts and stuff um, and the style, um, it's very much more of an NFL style offense than some of the other college quarterbacks will run. Um, so here uh, we move on to a little bit more of anticipate, anticipatory throws, but again, it's still looking to attack the middle of the field. Um, you've got a little variation of four verticals here where you're going to have a mo- tight end motion across um, and you're going to run, you got the three of the verticals here and then you got your isolated receiver on the backside. Instead of running a vertical, he's going to run a shallow cross um, and where McCarthy's going to go is, is, is hit his middle vertical. Um, and so we'll run this through and you'll see he motions that guy across. They all kind of shuffle across, which gives them a little bit of a zone indicator and um, against zone um, with the kind of split safety look. It's looking like this linebacker might have to try to carry this tight end up the seam. And then McCarthy knows, obviously, he's got his tight end. He's going to prefer his guy over over any kind of linebacker. Um, and so as he drops back to pass, you can see just as he's, he's watching this and then you can see it's kind of looking more like it's some sort of cover two, tamba two kind of thing where the, the linebacker is going to have to try to carry the tight end up the seam and you got kind of split safeties, um, so the hole is in the middle, um, and you can see once he gets level, he's ready to, th- to throw this ball, and you can see he's already starting to pull away and make this throw, and um, he delivers the throw before the tight end even clears the linebacker, um, and you'll see from the end zone angle that just how good the, the throw is um, in terms of ball placement, which we kind of come on to a bit as well, but um, again, you can see he's just started to pull the ball away here and this is nowhere near he's nowhere near cleared this linebacker but he's anticipating him clearing that linebacker he knows the space is here between the safeties um and you can see the ball comes out and he hits his guy perfectly in stride with with the linebacker eyes turns so he's never going to make a play on that ball um great throw great throw touchdown um another very nice anticipatory throw uh this is actually fourth and seven um in that championship game against iowa They've got a single receiver isolated to to the right of the formation. He's just going to run a comeback, um, and you, you just it's a timing and anticipation throw. Um, so you're going to see he, he kind of spots the safety rotate down late, and you can kind of see him point that safety rotating down late as a potential threat that they need to worry about with the pass rush. But um, when he sees that safety holding low, he knows he's pretty much got one on one on the outside here, um, so he can kind of just focus on uh, his receiver and, and this corner working one on one. That, that receiver does a nice job of, of eating up that cushion and getting that corner to open up and, and worry about the vertical threat. Um, and McCarthy, you can see he's already just started his hit step and he's about to, to begin his delivery stride um, just as the receiver is about to make his break. And, and now you can see that ball is separated. He's begun his throwing motion and this guy hasn't even made his break yet. So it's, it's really, really good anticipa- anticipation. Makes the throw, hits this guy. Picks up that first down, converts, um, moves the chains um, in a big spot. 
And Mark, real quickly um, on that last throw, so he had to gun that in there. So, you know, yep. my first question for you is, do you have any concerns or do you think J.J. McCarthy has the arm strength to thrive at the next level? That's my first question. <clears throat> yeah, I have, I have no concerns about his arm strength. I don't think he's got elite, elite arm strength, but mm -hmm. I think he's got plenty. He's got certainly more than enough to, to make any throw that you want him to make um, mm -hmm. on a consistent basis. Um, and, um, yeah, I, I have zero concerns about his arm strength at the next level. Gotcha. My next question would be that McCarthy seems to be pretty comfortable in the pocket, and kind of throwing in rhythm. Is that a strength of his? Do you, do you feel like? Because I feel like with May, Daniels, and even Williams, they're more of like more creative quarterbacks. While McCarthy is more of like a pocket passer. Is that fair to say? Or what do you? What are your thoughts on that? Um, he he is definitely comfortable in the pocket. Um, okay. And mm -hmm. there's a few clips of that you'll see in here where he's able to move within the pocket. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would say also he does have the ability to go off script. Mm -hmm. um, Fortunately, Michigan were pretty good, and he was able to play on script <laughs> more often than not. Makes sense. Um, yeah. So, so he he didn't he didn't need to. They didn't rely on him doing that kind of thing as much as you know Caleb Williams had to do for USC or uh, Drake May had to do for 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 Carolina, North Carolina. Um, yeah, yeah. They they were more reliant on that, but um, Michigan weren't. So he didn't have to do it, but he is capable of it. But yeah, from the pocket, he he's very comfortable, and then he he typically looks to win from the pocket first and foremost. There you go. Um, and yeah, we'll run this one through again. I'll just let it run through. You just see again, balls out way before the receiver breaks. It's on him pretty quickly. Complete that first down. Um, another an anticipatory throw here where you got, again, another four verticals um, with a three by one set. Um, this time it's not a shallow cross. He is going to run that vertical. Um, and basically when you're running four verticals, you're looking for the safety. So if you get too deep and, and they're showing too deep at the snap, um, so if you get too deep, you're you're looking at working outside. Um, if you get a single high, and that's what you ha what happens here is uh, Michigan State rotates the single high, then you're looking at the two seam routes. Um, and so McCarthy does a nice job here. He, they're showing too deep at the snap. Um, they also get a free play. They get a jump with a, a nice hard count. Uh, so he knows he can be more aggressive. Um, but he sees this safety kind of leaning more towards the middle of the field um, than going out towards the numbers as a, as a split safety. So he sees this safety deep, and even though this safety is kind of holding his position, he see, sees this one rotating more towards the middle, and he's thinking, okay, it's more of a single high coverage. I can work the seams. Um, and so his first thought is probably this deep over out, but then he sees this other safety kind of holding his spot here, and he knows I can't hit that. So his second thought is then, I'm gonna work the, the seam from my second tight end in the slot. Um, so he comes back across the middle and, he, and he's looking there and almost instantly ready to throw. Um, he then sees the kind of slot defender on top of it and kind of hesitates a little bit, but he sees that this defender is got his hips turned inside and kind of watching him, but uh, and, and watching inside. And he sees his tight end is widening, so he knows he's going to have some leverage to throw further outside because just because of the positioning of the defender. Um, so he makes that throw even with that defender on top of the route. And, and you can see the ball's already out here and that defender is now having to do a speed turn to be like, where is my guy? I don't know where he is. Mm -hmm. um, and because he's in a kind of a daze of wondering where he is, he can just throw <laughs> this ball on that tight end and he puts the ball on him and then tight end makes a nice catch and picks up the touchdown. Um, so those are some examples of, of how well he, he anticipates things um, and like that one again that, that one was a, a free play so it was one where he could be a little bit more aggressive and, and attack that leverage but um attacking leverage is something he did really nice job of throughout and um when you understand the leverage of a defender you can be a little bit more aggressive with your antici anticipation and be like okay i i understand that he's not quite in the right leverage i can throw this a lot earlier because it's going to take him a moment to adjust and get correct his leverage and and by the time he corrects his leverage that ball can be on the receiver and complete the pass so um but we, we also saw there that that was a, a really nicely placed throw on and, and you've seen some good throws in terms of accuracy um and, and so i thought we'd kind of build into some ball placement um examples here and, and again we're looking at throws that are attacking the middle of the field you've got a, a basic dagger concept here but um, and typically on dagger you have the inside guy running straight up the middle of the field trying to clear any deep defender and open up the, the middle of the field for this dig route from the outside receiver um, but what you're actually going to see here is um, this deep over route doesn't quite get carried initially 
Um, and I think McCarthy actually sees this safety playing shallow and he thinks there's actually space out here that I can throw over the top and, and hit this deep over out. Um, so he, he doesn't go with the traditional read. Um, and some teams do teach it that you can read this route first and then come back out to this one. Other teams are more traditional in this is just an alert against very specific coverages and you're working this one the entire time. Um, but we'll see here. Uh, and the end zone angle is the real one you, you want to focus on here. But you get a little bit of a play action. You get the safety biting up. The corner is attached because there's two tight ends. So he's staying bit, but, uh, biting up. Um, and so McCarthy instantly knows the space is over here. There's no safety. There's no corner over here. Um, we've got a deep safety in the middle here. And he's going to have to try to run with this slot receiver on this deep over route where he's running to space. Um, so instead of just working the traditional okay, that's a clear out and I'm going to hit the dig. Uh, he goes, he understands that this is where the, the space is in the defense and he can go with that route. Um, and he makes a tremendous throw. Mm. And from there, it looks really good. The end zone angle, it looks even better. Um, you'll see it here. Again, here's his receiver running that deep over. Um, this is the safety. This is the corner. They're both biting up because it was the run fake. And he places this ball beautiful beautifully throw. straight in stride. Um, you couldn't place it better. Um, the safety tried to get back under it, but because he was focused on the receiver, he couldn't see the ball perfectly placed and allows this guy to go and pick up an extra 10, 15 yards after the catch. And Mark, um, really quickly, I know your eyes were set on JJ McCarthy while you were watching the film. I'm a big Roman Wilson fan. That was a catch right there on that last pass. Projected second round pick, maybe third round pick. He's a great player. What are your thoughts on him? Did, you get to, did he pop on film for you? Did, was, did he have connection with McCarthy? What do you notice? <clears throat> yeah, for sure. Um, very, very fast. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, kind of as you saw there, a, a nice threat after the catch um, because of that speed. Uh, if you get him on those kind of over routes, and, and this is another one um, from, from him on the outside, okay. if you get him on those over routes where he's able to catch the ball and, and keep running with his speed, uh, he is a big threat. Um, so, yeah, um, in a situation where Washington wanted to go, McCarthy, maybe uh, <laughs> they would circle back for for Wilson and, and get Wolverine his connection. Okay, yeah, makes sense. Yeah, get his guy in the in the second or third round, maybe. But um, that's projecting a little bit. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, def definitely a good player. Um, and, and yeah, the, the speed definitely pops out, and it's something that I think was probably underutilized in in this offense because it was so run heavy. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I think in the NFL, it'll it'll stand out a little bit more. Um, but yeah, we've got another very similar concept here. Um, it, it's another dagger concept. This time they've got a tight end running a little hook underneath um, as the third option and uh, another more bait underneath to, to try to separate things. But again, he's going to be very aggressive in attacking the deep over route rather than working the, the dig. Um, so you're going to get Wilson coming in motion um, into a, a stack set and they're going to snap the ball and, and that's going to give him a head start and, and he's going to run across the field and this is a throw probably everyone's seen on Twitter, um, and it's one that, like, <laughs> I I don't know how much this is just an outstanding throw from him, and how much this is a, a lucky throw. Um, only McCarthy himself will be able to tell teams <laughs> how good this throw really is, because um, he's got this safety right here, and he's already starting to think I'm throwing this ball to, to Wilson on this over at one my. For me, I'm, I'm looking at this safety thinking, why would you ever consider throwing this ball? <laughs> exactly. Okay. Um, but the safety turns to try to locate his guy, and he puts this ball out in front, trusting Wilson to go make the play, and, and the safety kind of turns himself out of the play and never sees the throw. I have no idea how he doesn't see the throw, but he doesn't. Um, yeah. In terms of, again, ball placement, you couldn't get better ball placement. Yeah, it's of course. perfectly hitting him in stride. Um, but this really that safety should have been making that play and then, mm -hmm. and whether there was something McCarthy knew from film study that week of that safety isn't the best with his eyes and um, or whether he just didn't see him at that moment in time and, and was focused more on, on Wilson's route only he'll know um, <laughs> but again the ball placement is the key there it's a great throw um, and this one's a, another one where this time he's got just a tight end running a, a nice little curl route um, and you're going to see a defender, I believe it's this linebacker, sink back and, and realize that McCarthy's working this side and, and come sprinting all the way across the field to try to make this a play on this ball. Um, and McCarthy adjusts this throw mm. um, to, to put that ball away from him and, and protect protect the ball. Um, and the real impressive thing about this is is the, the placement. Again, the tight end's running a hook, and he's going to hook up around here. 
and normally you'd want that ball straight on him. But because this linebacker from the other side of the field is sprinting all the way across, um, and I have to assume McCarthy saw him coming mm-hmm. late, um, instead of hitting that on top of him, and again, he's got this guy underneath him, so it, it, you can't just throw it straight on top of him. Um, but with these two defenders, he's had to place it more outside. So he takes his guy outside away from the linebacker, and you can again see that is an incredibly tight window throw. Um, mm-hmm. Again, sort of over the middle of the field, certainly between the numbers, um, and perfect throw. Tyler makes the catch and um, picking up the first down. Um, hell of a play with a linebacker too, closing <laughs> closing down on that. That was a great play. Uh, yeah, insane <laughs> play by him, um, and unfortunate for him to not get the pass break up. But uh, exactly, you know, McCarthy was good enough to beat that. Um, and then there was one. Some people doubt like you brought up the arm strength thing earlier Mm -hmm. um some people doubt his arm strength and the ability to throw the deep ball um Mm -hmm. this was one example where um he's got a go around on the outside and he's got his tight end running an out route and and typically when when you get this kind of combination um the out route is more just the sorry the go route is just to clear out this space underneath for this out route but um this safety attaches to the to the out route uh, which means mccarthy knows he has one-on-one on the outside and so he takes his shot and the the ball uh, the arm is good. The ball placement is superb. Um, again, you see the safety is playing shallow and attaching to the tight end. And it, I, I think it's at that point there where McCarthy's looking that way. You can kind of see, okay, that safety is attaching. I've got one on one on the outside. I'm going to trust my guy and take my shot. And you can see pretty immediately as soon as that safety confirms he's attaching, he's he's separating and, and ready to throw that ball. And he delivers it a really nice ball down the sideline. Unfortunately, the receiver doesn't track it great. Um, and drops what should have been. Uh, did I include the end zone angle in this? I did. Um, yeah, great. So the throw is a really, really good throw, um, and you'll see that here. This is exactly where you want this ball to be placed on the outside shoulder. I think the receiver does a poor job tracking that one. Um, that's exactly where you want that ball to be thrown. Uh, the receiver tracks it late and tries to stick out a one hand to to catch it. I guess he just didn't quite see it early enough um, and, and can't bring in, but that's exactly where you'd want that ball to be thrown. Um, so Mark, great throw. Go ahead. Quick, quick question for you. So is from what you've seen so far, the past couple of plays, it seems like McCarthy has great accuracy, good ball placement. It seems like the ball has been just out of the reach of the defender's hands. Is he pretty risk averse? Have you noticed that? What are your thoughts on that? Because I noticed he has 22 touchdowns, four interceptions. I know they're primarily a running team in Michigan, so that probably lends itself to being risk averse. I was kind of curious. Does he take a lot of chances? Is he pretty smart with the ball? What are your thoughts on that? Just for your initial thoughts. He can be quite aggressive. Um, okay. Yeah, I wouldn't say he's risk averse. He definitely likes like risk averse quarterbacks would not attack over the middle of the field as often That's as he true. does. That's um, true. The, the, because there's more guys there and more chances to to have the ball intercepted. You, you mm-hmm. see, the, the guys that are risk averse tend to throw more outside the numbers. Um, Makes sense. <clears throat> so you, because you, it's simply just numbers. There's usually one corner against one receiver outside the numbers. So, um, yeah, that. He, he's not risk averse. Um, it was just more the style of offense that they played and didn't give him the, a huge amount of opportunities. Um, I think with more opportunities, he will have to learn to dial it in a little bit more um, because there were some throws, and you'll see that later on when we get onto that that moments of madness uh, <laughs> section. That um, okay. there are some some plays where he just needs to dial in a little bit and, and maybe learn to be be a little bit more risk averse but um he he's definitely not that Um, so then i thought we'd we'd move into some nfl kind of reads and progressions um so what you have here is is kind of a combination of two different uh concepts so you got a a smash concept down here uh where you've got a receiver that motions in short and he runs kind of an out and pivots back in uh, and then you got a receiver inside of him running a deep corner out and and this is a a high low combination where you're trying to key the outside defender and and if he sinks back you take the underneath if he bites underneath you you hit the over um if you get a safety kind of staying on top of this and the corner staying low then that's kind of dead um what mccarthy works is this backside one which again is another high low read where you got a shallow cross and a a basic cross from the other side um and so again the idea is um you're reading probably pretty much this linebacker and is he going to bite up on this shallow cross in which case you can throw that deeper route in behind him or is he going to sink back and you can hit that shallow cross and let that guy run after the catch um so we'll we'll run this one through and you'll see they motion the guy in they 
it's not the ball and you get that smash concept and, and he's pretty much you can see from his helmet and i think i've got the end zone angle on this but i'm not sure um but you get those two deep safeties um which you you could maybe think about throwing this corner out but they they sink back quite deep and, and he he this isn't the best look to run that into um so he's pretty much almost instantly thinking i'm working this combination here that um the shallow cross and the, and the basic cross behind it and you can see he's now like eyeing this linebacker and, and you can see this linebacker is starting to lean forward to to cover this shallow cross and that means again attack the middle of the field you can hit this basic cross in behind it and he steps up under a little bit of pressure hits a nice ball over the middle picks up a nice gain and i didn't include the end zone angle but um yeah that's that's a, an nfl type of read um this is another nfl type of reads uh this one is a, called a drive concept um where it's the same idea you get a shallow cross with a basic cross behind it this time just from the same side of the field um and again high low so you're looking for underneath defenders and do they bite up or do they sink back and if you get man coverage you might be able to hit the your kind of best matchup um if you're it depends how they play it. So you've got an inside and outside guy here. If, if this inside guy matches this shallow cross and they still play man coverage, but it's a match coverage, then that shallow cross is going to be dead and you're going to have to be working the basic cross. If you get pure man coverage where this outside guy is having to run with this shallow cross, then it's really tough for that guy to run with that shallow cross and you're probably thinking more hitting that shallow cross. Um, but you'll see here as we, as we run it through, um, this corner does end up trying to match the, uh, try to run with that shallow cross. The issue for McCarthy is A, they've got a blitzer running free and B, this safety drops down and he's ready to cut this crosser. Um, and you can see McCarthy, while he's dropping back, his eyes are leaning more towards this safety. Um, and so he sees that safety dropping down and he knows that this shallow cross, he could probably hit it. That safety is probably not going to drive that immediately, but it's going to limit the yards after the catch possibility. Um, so instead of working the shallow cross, and again, that, that corner is not in the worst position in the world, um, but he could throw this out in front, but again, that safety is in position. So instead, he, he looks at shallow cross and he works back to the basic cross, the deeper route. And when he gets back to it, he can see this corner that was covering it is out lever where well, he's playing inside leverage, but he allows the guy to cross his face. And mm. as soon as that happens, he knows he's got that middle of the field and, and McCarthy's instantly ready to throw that ball. And that safety that was probably meant to be playing a robber position in the middle of the field, he's suddenly out here kind of covering this shallow cross and leaving a huge gap over the middle of the field, again attacking the middle of the field. And he hits this guy in stride and they're able to pick up a big gain over the middle. And you'll see again from this end zone angle, um, you can see McCarthy's eyeing this safety and, and this guy's ready to drive down on that shallow cross. He could hit that shallow cross, but he's again, he's anticipating that that safety is going to drive down and, and stop that play, whereas he's vacating this middle of the field um, and he trusts his tight end to, to win and his tight end does win. Perfect ball over the middle again and accuracy over the middle, um, hitting the guy in stride and give him a chance to pick up yards after the catch. Um, yeah, great play. <clears throat> yep. Uh, and then a couple more NFL progression stuff. Uh, this one is a play you'll see quite frequently, a kind of quick game concept. Um, it's called stick spacing. Um, you've got stick route from the tight end here. Um, you've got the other tight end motioning across and he's going to run out to the flat. Um, and then you've got a spacing concept where you've got uh, the outside receiver is going to run a, a middle hook. Um, the inside receiver is going to run a, a hook up more towards the other hash mark. And the running back is going to swing out to the flat. Um, and this one is a kind of a pure progression read. Typically, you usually work from left to the right here. So you'd work the flat to the stick, to the hook, to the other hook, to the other flat. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll see that that is how McCarthy works this. Um, so the go in motion and immediately he's setting up towards the flat. In theory, you could probably take this. Um, minimal got, game. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a minimal game. You've got a corner kind of in position. Um, when you run it on a little second more, you think that's a little bit more leverage and you could probably throw this out here and, and trust your, your bigger tight end to beat a corner to the ball. Um, but he doesn't like it and he makes a decisive decision to move on. You can already see he's already moved on to this tight end on the stick, uh, but he's got a safety right there and he can't make that throw. So that's two reads instantly down, quickly resetting back to the middle hook. Um, middle hook hasn't even got to his spot yet and McCarthy's already on him, ready to read it. and. He's under a bit of pressure, doesn't have the chance to set his feet, instantly gets the ball out and finds his guy over the middle of the field, completes the pass. So 
quick read, getting the ball out one, two, three. Um, you'll get to see it again here. Um, checks flat, doesn't like it. Resets to the hook, to the stick, doesn't like it. Tries to reset to the to the middle, feels that pressure, can't really have the time to set his feet properly. Still gets that ball out, hits his guy one, two, three quickly. Ball out in the quick game, and and that's Absolutely. something, you, yeah, you, you love. And it, it, this is the exact same concept, um, run from a slightly different personnel group and, and formation, but. Again, you get the, the stick and the, the flat to this side, and you get that spacing concept with the two different hook routes and the, and the running back swing to the flat. Um, and this time, they they don't go in motion with it, um, so they kind of shuffle across, again, suggesting kind of a zone coverage. Um, so McCarthy's eyes go outside to the flat. He sees this corner playing way off, and that makes this the kind of obvious throw instantly. So straight away sets up throws that ball out to the flat, gets it to his guy and gives him a chance to, you know, with a, a nice cushion. Um, he doesn't delay on that throw thinking, oh, maybe the stick route's going to be better or maybe there's going to be something else. It's balls out straight away. He understands that's the first read. With the first reads open, I'm throwing that ball. I'm getting out straight away. And he's giving his time a, a guy a chance to make yards after the catch. And, and that's what he does. And I feel like this is why... Down. This is why McCarthy is a track of NFL teams, right? They're, they're pro-level concepts. He's progressing through the different routes. He's sitting in the pocket. He's prepared to throw it at any given time, and he's doing it decisively, right? So I feel like that's why NFL teams are attracted to him. So it's very impressive. Exactly. <clears throat> yep. Um, and so we move into some throws under pressure. Um, again, the, this is a this is an NFL concept. Every NFL team runs this, but this is also one of the most popular plays in college football. Um, it's, it's called Mesh. Um, yeah. You have a, a shallow cross from one side, a shallow cross from the other. You got a deep hook. Typically, you'd have the running back running a wheel route, but they mix it up with having the receiver go in motion and run the wheel route. Um, and and normally, you would if you get man, man coverage, you're reading the the wheel route to the shallow cross to the hook to the other shallow. Some teams teach it differently, where it's if you're if you're playing if you get man coverage, you're working the wheel route to the shallow. If you get zone coverage, you're working the middle of the hook straight away. Um, it's some everyone has a different take on it because it's so popular. Um, but you'll see here what ends up happening is uh, Ohio State, I think it is, brings some pressure or gets some pressure. Center misses a block, and, and you get this man coming up the middle. Um, defense kind of takes away that wheel route. The shallow crosses don't look great initially, um, but with pressure in his face, McCarthy has to kind of make a quick decision, and he sees this guy. It's kind of occupied with the, the hook route over the middle, and he's got this shallow crosser in his face as well, so he understands that that's kind of going to pick this linebacker, so he knows he can hit this guy running into this space that's kind of open over there. Um, so he speeds up his process, gets the ball out with a defender in his face, and I think I've got the end zone angle on this one. Um, I should do that anyway. Uh, but a, a nice throw and then being able to speed up the process and, and, and make a good decision under pressure Again, that center misses that block quickly, and, and this line lineman's coming straight up the middle at him, and he does he isn't phased. He, he speeds up his process. He understands again that linebacker's got guys in his in his way, and, and he can hit that shallow cross. Does a nice job, gets the ball out, and hits his guy, and, and they pick up a positive game. Um, so that's one example of a throw under pressure. This one, this one was a fantastic throw. Um, you get in a a deep post route from the outside receiver and, and he's going to release inside to get inside the numbers but then break inside even further um, and I'll just run this one on um, you can see they end up getting pressure late on him and he gets hit and it looks like it's a nice throw from that angle then you see the end zone angle um, and it's an even better throw um, I think what happens is this uh, linebacker uh, kind of fakes rushing and then <clears throat> delays and, and rushes and then the left guard kind of gets caught out and McCarthy ends up getting pressured pretty quickly um but he doesn't kind of skip a beat under pressure and um ah, they run a stunt that's what it is so yeah the left guard gets beat by the stunt and and the defensive end stunts inside and right in his face mccarthy there's a risk here because there's a robber safety in the area and this is his receiver that he's throwing um and with a guy in his face that's that's a risky throw to make um but kind of like we talked about he's not afraid to make throws over the middle of the field um Again, with pressure in his face, he makes a real nice throw, just dodges that defender, hits his guy pretty much in stride, and unfortunately the, the guy drops it. Mm. Um, but tremendous throw under pressure. Um, and then this one is probably one of his best throws 
that I watched in, in, in his his whole... I've watched six games of his uh, season, or maybe seven games of his season last year, um, mm-hmm. and this is probably the highlight throw. Um, mm-hmm. And you've got uh, kind of a dagger concept with the inside receiver running the, the clear out route. You've got the dagger and you've got the, the shallow cross um, to give a high low as well. Um, but they're going to get pressure and you're going to see some good pocket movement and he's going to get back to his uh, Roman Wilson running that uh, deep route. And you'll just see the pocket movement and dealing with the pressure. So they get a little stunt and this guy's going to come up the middle under uh, unblocked and, and McCarthy feels that pressure off the left side as well. Uh, steps up to avoid it, gets back on and throw in rhythm and, and spots his guy uh, Wilson running to the end zone and makes a nice throw. And, and the end zone angle of this is shows just how good of a play this is. Again, he's working to his left, thinking that dagger concept off the snap. Feels this kind of pressure coming, but obviously this guy's coming free as well. Um, so he makes the free defender miss, gets back into. Um, kind of safe space and, and gets his eyes down the field, spots his guy running to, to wide open space here and gets his eyes up and, and makes play. a nice throw. Mm-hmm. Fantastic play, one of his best, I think. So, um, yeah, and then the, the kind of mobility aspect of it, um, you saw there his mobility within the pocket. Um, obviously, in the NFL, a, a guy like a, a Carl Shanahan, or as I kind of talked about, the tree of Carl Shanahan coaches that are out there now, uh, they all run the kind of the wide zone and the bootlegs off of it and he's very much capable of running that kind of stuff he, he's he's mobile he's he's not necessarily as athletic, athletic as a Jaden daniels um and, or maybe even as athletic as a drake may that they're, they're probably fairly similar him and drake may i would think mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. but he's certainly athletic enough to get out on on the edge on the perimeter and then and run the bootlegs so you'll see here just kind of standard bootleg play um fakes the run obviously from the shotgun rather than under center um but still rolling out to his right the flat options taken away um the deeper option also has a kind of safety guy over the over the top of it so he comes back to the backside crossing route makes a nice throw hits this guy in stride i think i have the end zone angle um because it's a good throw it's again dropped um yeah it comes back across to, to that shallow cross on the backside nice throw hits this guy in stride not sure why that's being dropped but it is um but process again, good, nice mobility, able to um, throw on the run and, and, and run to the perimeter and, and do the kind of bootleg stuff. And then here we've got um, Ohio State getting some pressure and, and he's able to, to scramble and, and create off script. So you get these two edge rushers coming off the edge, both creating some pressure pretty quickly. Um, this guy's driving the right tackle back, left tackle kind of loses off, off his edge. Um, McCarthy's feeling that pressure off both sides and and takes off running to his right with with no immediate option to throw to um and as he kind of runs out to his right he he stays pretty deep back he doesn't get up towards the line of scrimmage he stays back so he's looking for a throw and what, what he actually gets to is is this guy's kind of covered in the flat but he sees um this receiver breaking outside and um makes that throw and i think at the end an angle of this because it's a very nice throw mm. um yeah, avoiding that pressure, able to create off script, and again, great throw hits his guy and completes the pass and for a first down. Um, and Mark, real quick, though, yeah. yeah. So uh, with McCarthy, I think one thing that I kind of hear about when I'm reading about him, watching him, is that he plays under center and kind of incorporates play action a lot into his game. Is that an advantage that he has over the other quarterbacks, or do you think that necessarily a big of a learning curve at the pro level? What are your thoughts on that? <clears throat> uh, I, I don't think it's as huge a learning curve as it once was. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think it's kind of the given thing now that most college quarterbacks operate in the shotgun or the pistol and, and have a little bit of an adjustment. And so I think um, NFL coaches have kind of come to expect that when, when they draft a the guy, they're, they're going to have to teach them under center stuff. And so they're not too wor- worried about that. And, and McCarthy does have that experience of playing under center more. So mm-hmm. I guess that does give him a little bit of an advantage, but I don't think it's a significant one. Um, gotcha. Because as I say, I, I think coaches and stuff are used to that that's kind of the standard expectation now is, is most guys operate out of the shotgun and, and we'll have to teach them a little bit of the under center footwork anyway um mm-hmm. and it's just kind of a given and, and accepted at this point so gotcha. um and then one last thing to add into the mobility um is you can incorporate him in the run game and, and michigan did and then he's not necessarily a guy that um you want running the ball you know 20 times a game but um 
here they run, uh, I believe this is an inverted view uh, scheme where basically it, it's essentially quarterback power, uh, but you got, I think it's the running back aligned outside and he's going to come across in motion on, on kind of a jet sweep and he's going to get the whole defense thinking it's being handed off to him on the edge here, but actually McCarthy's going to run a, a power scheme up inside. So um, you see the comes across and they snap the ball and, and they pull both the left guard and the left tackle um, so you get all these defenders working outside thinking this ball's coming off on the jet sweep and that gives you some nice blocking up front for, for McCarthy to pull the ball and run himself and they, and they get this nice seal here and, and he's able to get around his blocker and get out to the edge um, and run up the sideline you know he's he's not a, a 4-3 guy like potentially Jaden Daniels might be in or like RG3 was or Lamar Jackson but he's, he's plenty mobile um, and um, you know he's running away from defenders there and getting to the sideline and picking up a first down so absolutely so he, he's definitely got mobility um, and that's definitely a part of his game that you could use and if you want to run some quarterback runs um, or sort of incorporate certainly read option stuff um, he can definitely do that um, but then I thought I've been fairly high in my praise of him, probably more so than most people would be. So I thought we'd talk about a little bit of the negatives at the end, um, where he is quite raw. Uh, he is prone to some moments of, of madness um, and some throws where you're just like, why, what were you thinking there? And, and kind of we saw that incredible throw in that Ohio State game where he hit Roman Wilson on that deep over and there was that safety right there that somehow didn't see the throw. Um, this is kind of another one. Um, this time in the championship game, Big, Ch Big Ten championship game against the high, uh, Iowa, sorry. Um, and you got the tight end running up the seam. And he's going to basically throw this ball straight to this linebacker. And I don't <laughs> really understand why he does it. Because um, the throw is never really on. Um, he, the linebacker does a nice job. It, it's his own coverage. Uh, so maybe he thinks I can anticipate this and, and throw this into this window here once he clears that linebacker. The linebacker does a nice job forcing the tight end wide, um, but he he doesn't put this ball out in front and, and force this guy inside away from the coverage. He kind of throws it straight at him, and I think I've got the end zone angle um, where it, it looks particularly bad because he pretty much throws it straight at the linebacker, and the, and the linebacker somehow drops it. Um, what do you think? What do you think happened? Did the ball got got out of his hand or something? It kind of slipped or something? Or what, what were your thoughts there? I I think what. As I say, the idea, uh, if I bring it back, the idea here is if you place this, like, it's and trying to anticipate his tight end clearing the linebacker. Mm -hmm. And and so if he places this ball more inside, then his tight end's going to run inside and, and beat that linebacker. Um, yeah. So I'm guessing that's what he's thinking. Um, and he just executes the throw poorly. Yeah. Um, or maybe the linebacker does a better job than he expects him to at being able to kind of pivot back inside and, and make a play. Um, but the linebacker got there so early that when you see it from the end zone angle, it's kind of almost behind the linebacker. Um, mm -hmm. You see he's having to try to... If it was out in front over here where this yeah. tight end is, um, obviously this safety then comes into play, um, which makes it quite a tight window throw. Uh, but you can see he's kind of having to reach back and you see how his body turns in the air. He's, he's reaching back for the ball um, and drops the interception. So I think it was just kind of a, probably my guess would be it was kind of a, a young quarterback thinking I can fit this ball in there uh, mm -hmm. and realizing that actually sometimes you can't um, and sometimes those windows aren't worth attempting. Um, mm -hmm. And this is, this is another one. Weirdly, I think you said he had four interceptions in, mm -hmm. in this past season. Three of them came against uh, Bowling Green. Um, so probably the worst opposition <laughs> yeah. he played. He okay. threw, three, threw three of his interceptions. Um, so, And this is uh, one of them. So uh, again, we see that kind of stick concept um, where you got tight end kind of running the stick and you got the other tight end uh, motioning across and then running out to the flat. Uh, and then on the backside, you got um, you kind of got a deep over and a, a dig behind it. Um, and we'll run this one through and you can see as we get out here he's working this stick uh, he doesn't he could probably make this throw to the flat but the, the defender in coverage does a nice job staying on top of it and, and getting outside so he's probably thinking this isn't a touchdown um, it's pro probably a completion but then he's having to trust his tight end to go make a play and, and maybe that's probably what he should have done um, but then he's got kind of both of his guys here covered 
Um, so he comes back across and, and he sees his uh, deep over out here running in behind. I think of yeah. So he's got this deep over out running in behind and he thinks I the linebackers are playing underneath, the safety's out of position. I can just layer this ball over the top and, and make that mm. throw. And yeah, you can, um, but he he doesn't anticipate this guy or anyone on this backside potentially falling off into it. Um, mm. And this is this is play. just a play that it's it's a really good play by this defender, mm-hmm. um, falling off that coverage and, and sinking back into the route to to intercept that pass. But it's one, so it's it's not like it's the worst interception in the world from McCarthy, but it's it's one where perhaps a more experienced quarterback when when they're scanning back to that that deep over route they might think actually there might be a guy over there just before i deliver this ball i need to make sure there's nobody sinking back into that throwing lane Mm -hmm. um and so a more experienced quarterback probably doesn't throw that one um and this this one again isn't the worst interception in the world it looks really really bad i think the receiver doesn't do the a, a great job here either but you've got a double post concept um so the idea of a double post is you get the inside receiver grabbing this safety and dragging him inside and, and vacating a big window here where ideally you've got a corner playing with outside leverage trying to cover an in-breaking route um, running into the space. Um, so we'll run this one through and when we get to the throw, he steps up in the pocket feeling a little bit of pressure off his right side. Um, you can see here down the field we've got uh, the slot receiver running just about to break over the middle and, and drag that safety out of position. Um, well, not out of position, but force him to, to cover him, which should open up the, the window here for this post from the outside receiver. Um, the issue for McCarthy is that this corner plays this pretty well. He doesn't play really heavy outside leverage. He understands, I think he understands what's happening with the concept. Um, and so he stays on top of the route and, and not too outside or inside leverage. He kind of just stays on top of it and, and neutral leverage. Um, and by being in that position, that means he's in a nice position to make a play on the ball. And you can see here, McCarthy's feeling the pressure and feeling like I should be able to throw. I, I should. This safety is not an issue because he's covering this guy. And perhaps the first post route is probably where McCarthy should be throwing this ball. Um, but he thinks this safety is going to be dragged out of position by that route. And I'm going to have one on one on this side. And I'm going to give my guy a chance to make a play. Um, the issue is the placement of the throw um he kind of throws it as a traditional post route um but because this corner is on top of the route he probably needs to throw it a little bit more flat and and bring his receiver more across the field rather than pushing him up the field um and so you can see that corner then is able to stay on top of the route and, and drive on top of the ball uh where and and because the receiver was being led deeper that corner is able to make the play whereas if that receiver was being led more across the field the corner wouldn't have been able to drive on top of it quite so mm-hmm. easily and, and the receiver could have probably protected the ball. Now, I think the receiver, again, probably does him a little bit of a disservice by not breaking off the route a little bit more flat, um, but he's also reacting to where he thinks McCarthy is throwing the ball. Um, so, yeah, it, it's it's kind of a misunderstanding of the leverage um, of the defender and, and ends up being an interception and, and the defender kind of takes it back for a pretty strong return afterwards and... Yeah, Mark, bring it back a second on that last play. So I we, yep. I think McCarthy has great processing. Um, am I wrong to think that the wide receiver on the bottom of the screen is probably the most open of the three? Am I wrong about that? Like, I feel like he has a step on the wide receiver. Oh, this guy down here? Yeah. 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 What are your thoughts on uh, that? Possibly. Um, I, I think it's just not part of the, the read. Um, okay. It, 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 I mean, yeah, you're right. He is like a step on his guy and he's going to mm-hmm. break outside. But when it's you're running a double post... Gotcha. Yeah, okay. when, when you're running mm-hmm. a double post concept, you're thinking, you're mainly thinking the outside post. You're you're wanting your inside post to take away the safety, which is what it does. Gotcha. Um, and then you're thinking, I've got one on one on the outside, so I'm I'm going to my outside guy, and mm-hmm. then I'm I'm checking the ball down to the flat if that's not there. Um, mm-hmm. So this this is again more just to occupy defenders and and take because he's breaking outside, it's to take guys across the field and, and open up this middle of the field even more. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not really part of the read. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, that that was that was the second interception in that bowling green game, um, <laughs> and then we got the third one coming up, um, which I think is the last one, um, where they they bring a, a blitz. So both linebackers come on a blitz, and uh, McCarthy ends up scrambling around, and and 
makes a, a pretty poor decision. Um, you'll see here. Both linebackers come on the blitz, and um, the guard tries to peel off and pick up for the first linebacker, um, but the other linebacker comes free, and there's some pressure off of that side anyway, and, and McCarthy decides to get out of the pocket and, and start to scramble. He does a nice job avoiding that first defender, but then there's more defenders around him, and he makes kind of a poor decision to... I What I, he ends up trying to do, I think, is throw this deep crossing route uh, over here, um, yeah, he kind of throws this ball, expect, I think expecting either this guy to keep running or his other receiver to run over to this space. And he throws it deep and yeah, ends, up, decision. ends up getting picked yeah. up, picked off. Um, I think I might at the end zone angle of this, yeah. So a good job to avoid the pressure and, and keep the play alive. Again, good example of his mobility um, to keep the play alive, avoid the sack and, and get out of a bad situation. Um, but if there's no receivers open and, and this guy's pretty much covered and you could argue this guy could possibly be about to be open, but just throw this ball away. Um, and it may be that's what he was trying to do. We saw this a couple of times with Sam Howe last year where he was trying to throw the ball away and, and got intercepted. Uh, but in this situation, like, just throw this ball out here. Don't mm -hmm. try to throw it down the field. Um, yeah. And that to me says he was... That to me says he was trying to complete this pass down here um, yeah. and ends up getting intercepted. So... And, and that comes down to, again, some kind of inexperience and sort of a little bit of poor judgment and from a, from a young quarterback. So, um, but yeah, th that that is the main negative on him is that he is a young guy and, and has some inexperience and, and he's going to have some rough moments, certainly in a rookie year. Um, he, he's going to have some bad moments there. You're like, why, why did you make that decision? Why did you make that throw? Mm -hmm. But I think all the traits that you would want are there. Um, the, the ability to attack the middle of the field, the anticipation he throws with, the accuracy. Um, he already has experience kind of running a, a pro style offense and, and making the different types of reads and that you see NFL quarterbacks have to make. Um, yeah, he's good under pressure. He has the mobility aspect, both as a passer to be able to move within the pocket and then scramble. Um, and if you want to involve him in the run game, he can be involved in that. But um, you're also going to have to deal with the fact that, you know, he only just turned, I think it was 21 in January. Yeah, 21, so, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So he basically <clears throat> played this whole season at age 20. Um, so he's very young, mm -hmm. very raw. Um, so there's a ton of upside, but there is going to be some some rough edges with that that you're, you're going to have to live with early in his career. Absolutely. So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, Mark. I'm also going to throw it out to the chat too if they want to throw some questions to you as well. So for sure. one, thank you for everybody. There's 1,030 people watching across YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter right now. I appreciate that. Um, if you like Mark's uh, work, definitely check out his Substack and follow his, his written work as well. Um, so a couple of things real quick. When I popped up, Henry said, uh, great breakdowns. A compliment to you, Mark, for breaking down the film very nicely for us. Uh, Galactic also said, honestly, watching the film study, JJ is a lot better than I thought he was. He'll probably be, he'll probably be rather good. I agree with that. Um, I'll throw you a couple questions real quick. So, um, you know, obviously there's a lot to like with McCarthy. Um, you know, a lot of things, it's kind of funny. Like, I think it's a little hybrid, like of each one of the quarterbacks we're seeing with Williams and May and McDaniels, like he has that size, 6'3", 220. He's young, 21, like Drake May is. There's some mobility, like he's not as mobile as Daniels, but he's pretty mobile as well. Um, I guess what would we talked about the knocks and the aggressiveness, but May does that as well. Why, like, where does he land in regard to your kind of quarterback like hierarchy in regard to one through four? And like, I guess why is he? You know, why why would you kind of justify your opinion on that? <clears throat> yeah, I, I think for me, the clear number one guy is Caleb Williams. I think mm -hmm. he's the one guy that has elite elite traits, um, mm -hmm. and, and so he's in a class of his own. After that. I, I think objectively, I would still say right now the better player, the better quarterbacks are uh, Drake May and Jaden Daniels. And mm -hmm. I've gone back and forth on those guys pretty consistently throughout this mm -hmm. process. Um, so for me, they're kind of 2A and 2B. Um, I, I Right now, I'm kind of leaning slightly more towards May than Daniels, but mm -hmm. it, it literally is... A, a daily thing where I'm like, maybe I prefer Daniels. <laughs> for all of us, um, for all of us, yeah. exactly. So um, it really is close between them. Um, so for me, objectively speaking, right now McCarthy is below those three guys. Mm -hmm. um, but it wouldn't surprise me, especially if he lands in a Shanahan system, that 
plays to his his strengths of being a good anticipatory thrower, um, having really good accuracy, attacking the middle of the field, not afraid to attack the middle of the field, um, mm-hmm. off of the kind of play action stuff that the Shanahan's do really well. Um, I think it, there's cer- certainly a path for him that in four or five years' time, when you're looking back at this quarterback class, mm-hmm. McCarthy might be one of the more successful ones just I because can... he he fits that system so well. The, the traits that he does, the things that he does well, fits certainly that style of offense or West Coast offense or the Shanahan system so, so well that he could be very productive early on and certainly down the line, he could become very, very good in that system. So um, that's where I think McCarthy could be one of the better quarterbacks from this class, um, but he won't necessarily fit every single system. If, if you're looking for him to, um, you know, rip the ball outside the numbers, forty yards down the field, there's guys with better arms that do that. Um, if, so, so if Mark, yeah, I was gonna say that. Yeah. I guess you're, you're kind of going down this route. You know, it's gonna kind of follow up on it. So you're saying May probably has a better arm and can throw those balls outside the numbers, and has a deep, the more live arm. Maybe Daniels is more explosive as a runner, so they're kind of more intriguing for two and three. That's why. That's why the rationale behind all that. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's gonna be a personal preference, like, mm-hmm. and it depends on what kind of system you know they they want to run. Um, mm-hmm. I think. Cliff Kingsbury, the way I think Cliff Kingsbury is trending from when I studied his offense, obviously his 2019 offense when he first entered the league or was it 2018, whatever it was, Mm -hmm. um, it was that kind of air raid system. And as he progressed in the NFL, it became less and less the air raid system and and more and more similar to uh, kind of standard NFL offense where it's about running the ball, setting up play action, attacking the middle of the field off play action, very not extremely similar to the Carl Shanahan style, but kind of in that mold um, mm-hmm. and obviously he played in a division where it was you know the Cardinals with the 49ers Kyle Shanahan and then the Rams with Sean McVay so he was seeing those offenses kind of tear up his defense for <laughs> four times a year um, yeah yeah so it, it that would naturally make you gravitate more towards that style mm-hmm. um, so if he is trending more in that direction then a JJ McCarthy type would fit with what that kind of offense is um, I think a Drake May would also fit what that kind of offense is, and it's probably a little a step or two ahead of where McCarthy is hmm. in his development right now. Um, but this isn't a every every decision we've seen from from this front office and this regime so far from from Adam Peters is that if this is a long term project and and everything has been about long term, and, and so if you're thinking two or three or four years down the line maybe you're thinking J.J. McCarthy is going to be the better guy in the long term. Um, and, and you think McCarthy can work out some of the, the kinks of, you know, just being young and and sometimes stupidly aggressive and, and having the <laughs> moments of madness. And, and with some experience in two or three years' time, you're thinking he hopefully would work that out of his game and kind of iron out those mistakes and those errors and be able to and, and be a more complete quarterback. Whereas if you look at a Drake May, a lot of his issues are, you know, he has issues with ball placement and um, inconsistent footwork and accuracy underneath. And yeah, in theory, you could work on the footwork and, and we've seen guys like Sam Howell really improved his footwork. But if you're not getting the time away to sit and work on those reps constantly and, and rebuild your muscle memory, then he's... It, there's a concern in your mind that maybe those issues don't go away and you're having going to have to live with those and, and maybe in three or four years time McCarthy is the more complete guy mm. um, so that that's kind of where I'm looking at it right now and, and again I, I have a preference towards the Shanahan system I'm very much up front <laughs> about that and, and so I can't get out of my head that McCarthy would be such a good fit for that so that's why I probably like him more than most um, mm-hmm. So I, I think in a few years' time, he could well be a guy that um, ends up being one of the more productive guys from this class um, if, he, if he lands in that kind of system. Um, but if you want more of a, a more, better overall traits and, and, and maybe a guy that if you polish up the, like the inconsistencies with his footwork, you, you might lean more towards May. Um, or if you like the explosive runner that running element that, that Daniels brings, you, you might lean more towards Daniels. Um, all three are really good prospects and i yeah. think if you have a good development plan it, it, for either guy they they could all have good clear paths to success 
Um, so I, I think Washington's a really, really nice spot with three very good options. Gotcha. We'll wrap it up with the million dollar question mark and we'll get out of here with this. If you were the commanders, is he a worthy enough selection, a worthy enough prospect for the number two overall selection? Or how do you feel about that? <clears throat> yeah, I, I know people would think it's crazy to, to be like J.D. McCarthy at number two when everyone was like, is he even a first round pick a mm -hmm. few months ago? But um, <laughs> So first round pick, me, that's, that's a staple. We, we, he's going in the first round. We know that for sure now. But yeah, go ahead. yeah. Mm. yeah for me, my philosophy on quarterbacks is you should not be taking a quarterback in the first round if you don't absolutely love it. That's true. Um, because nothing sets you back more than drafting a quarterback like we saw with Dwayne Haskins or you see with the Patriots with Mac Jones now. Um, nothing sets you back more than drafting a quarterback you don't love in the first round and you're having to reset things in, in two or three or four years' time. So if you don't love any of these guys, you don't draft them in the first round, let alone second overall. If you do love the guy, if you think the character is amazing, the leadership and, and all that stuff that you learn throughout, as we talked about earlier, the pro day process and all the the uh, meetings and uh, the, the combine and the, 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 it, the invites to the building and that kind of stuff. If you learn all of that character and think, actually, this is a really good character, we're going to bet on his traits and, and bet on his work ethic to develop himself, then if you really love him, you take him at two. You don't play the kind of game of, oh, maybe we can drop back four or five slots and, and get him at five, six or seven. Mm -hmm. You don't risk that. If you love the quarterback, you take him at two because you don't want anyone else to get him because you think he can be your franchise quarterback. If you don't love the quarterback, you don't think he's going to be your franchise quarterback. Or if you're in a position where you're willing to drop back and risk missing out on him, that to me just says, actually, I don't love the guy. And I, you're you're willing that, to let him pass you by, right? You're, you're, exactly. you're risking it. Exactly. I can see that. Yeah. If you're willing to take that mm -hmm. risk, you don't mm -hmm. love the guy and you shouldn't be drafting him in the first place. So, gotcha. um, so yes, I, I think if you love JJ McCarthy and you think he can be that guy in, in three or four years time, then absolutely take him to two. Gotcha. Thank you, Mark. You've been awesome. Great breakdown. You definitely sold me on McCarthy a little bit. I think he has a great pocket presence. I think he, he runs a good pro system. He's pretty athletic, pretty mobile. I'm definitely watching his moments of madness some more to kind of make sure he doesn't do that in future <laughs> aspects. Um, you know, guys, thank you for checking us out in the chat. I appreciate that as well. Me, Mark, Doug, and Nick are on um, every uh, Tuesday at 4.30, Commander's Film Room. Definitely check us out. Uh, check out Mark's work on Substack. He did some great written work about all the quarterbacks and the major prospects. Um, I'm George Carmi at GCarmi21 on Twitter. Catch, you know, keep up with us there and uh, see you guys next week. Peace out. <laughs>